Starlink, Elon Musk's satellite internet service, could help Iranian protesters in the fight against their brutal regime. That's why lawmakers are calling on the State Department to coordinate the effort on the ground. The plan is not without risks. Iran's security forces could track down and punish users and their families in retaliation. Caitlin Burke reports. At the end of September, the U.S. eased restrictions on Internet services to counter the government's censorship. Elon Musk wants to take it one step further by providing Iranians with Starlink, his satellite Internet service. While the satellites are now active over Iran, the Internet signal won't be accessible until portable receivers can somehow be delivered on the ground. In Ukraine, he pushed thousands of them, but obviously we had a government uh, to work alongside. In Iran, we don't, but there are NGOs on the ground. We have covert uh, means uh, through various uh, partnerships and, and routes that we can get these things in. Congressman Mike Waltz believes the U.S. government should coordinate those efforts. He and Representative Maria Salazar recently wrote to Secretary of State Antony Blinken requesting the State Department get involved. And lift off a Starlink 435. I mean, this Starlink system can be an avenue uh, for freedom and be an avenue to expose these regimes uh, whether it's cell phone videos being taken of their brutality or just people's message uh, to their loved ones around the world that's trying to get out. I think we have a moral responsibility to help get these receivers in so that they can link up with the satellites and, and get these messages out. The receivers would allow users to bypass firewalls put in place by the Iranian government and connect directly to satellite Internet. Musk himself has warned, however, that there's significant risk involved. The signal can be easily tracked, which means Iran's security forces could locate users, shut them down, and arrest them. Still, they are taking risks not to just themselves, uh, but to their entire families, because these regimes crack down not just on the person daring to speak out, but their family, their village, their entire tribe. They're still willing to take those risks and they're willing to fight for their freedom. Waltz hopes the U.S. will agree to facilitate this public-private partnership, but worries the Biden administration may not want to rock the boat with the Islamic regime in order to complete a new Iran nuclear deal. Gordon? Well, Caitlin, uh, Starlink, uh, how has it helped in the fight against Russia? And it's been installed in Ukraine, so how has it helped? Well, uh, Ukrainian military officials say it's really been a game changer there. Russia was looking to totally block communications, and Starlink allowed the Ukrainian military to bypass that. So not only were they able to communicate with their tr troops on the front line, their troops on the front line were able to let their families know that they're okay, and they were also able to use military technology that relies on an internet signal, like drones. And they're still actively using that today. Now, clearly, one big difference between Ukraine and Iran is that the Ukrainian government wants Starlink and the Iranian government does not. But lawmakers say if we can find a way to activate it in places like Iran, then it can also be used as a tool for other oppressed, oppressed uh, nations like Cuba and China um, or North Korea. Gordon? Well, Elon Musk has, has pointed out there's a fundamental flaw that you can't actually track it because these things are also transmitters. So it, 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 how useful will it be in a situation where the, the government is actively looking for that signal and then can swoop in and, and shut it down? It's definitely a risk. You know, the receivers need to be in a wide open space in order to get a signal. So they're going to be pretty obvious, you know, if they're mounted on a roof. And as you said, the signal is trackable. And Musk warned about that in Ukraine. And he's warning about it for Iran as well. But lawmakers like Walt said that the, the Iranians know that risk and they are still begging for it. They say that, you know, they're willing to use it for as limited as an amount of time as, as they can and that they think that it will still be helpful. So unknown, uh, but they still want it. Gordon? Well, let's talk about the protests in Iran that continue to grow. So how is this changing and how is the government responding? 
So the protests entered their fourth week as of Sunday, and people are only growing more and more emboldened. Over the weekend, a state-run newscast was actually hacked. First, a, a picture of a cartoon mask popped up during a segment with Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei, and then his picture popped up on the screen with a target on his head, alongside the images of the women who have been killed in Iran over the last month. So the protesters are finally finding a way to get around the government blocks on the internet and on social media apps, and they're still getting their message out. Um, so, you know, the government is continuing to violently crack down, and the U.S. is condemning that, but it doesn't show any—there's there's no end in sight to these protests, Gordon. All right. Well, Caitlin, thanks for the report. In, that, in other news, Israeli police are searching for a Palestinian who shot and killed a female soldier this weekend. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. The attack took place at a checkpoint Saturday night in an East Jerusalem neighborhood. This video shows the terror suspect walking up to a group of soldiers and firing at point-blank range. The shooting coming hours after two Palestinian teenagers died in an Israeli military raid in Judea and Samaria. The IDF has launched what it calls Operation Break the Wave in the territories, conducting nightly raids designed to stop terror attacks before they happen. Well, turning now to increasing concerns that the world is closer to a nuclear weapons strike. North Korea confirms that a recent barrage of missile launches were the simulated use of tactical battlefield nukes. This as Russia, which has threatened to use nuclear weapons on Ukraine, unleashed a new barrage of missile attacks this morning. Dale Hurd has a story. North Korea says seven missile launches, including two Sunday, were drills of its tactical nuclear operation units, training to wipe out U.S. and South Korean targets. Pyongyang is upset over recent U.S.-South Korean live-fire exercises in the region. Meanwhile, explosions rocked multiple Ukrainian cities today, including the capital of Kyiv where in just one strike, at least eight people were killed and 24 were injured. The attack was Russian President Vladimir Putin's response to the Saturday explosion on the huge bridge connecting Russia to its annexed territory of Crimea. The attack believed to be the work of Ukraine. Ukrainian President Zelensky told his nation Russia is trying to wipe us off the face of the earth. This as there are growing fears Putin might use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Joe Biden recently warned that the risk of nuclear Armageddon is the highest it's been since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called those comments reckless. Even more importantly, they demonstrate maybe one of the greatest foreign policy failures of the last decades, which was the failure to deter Vladimir Putin in the same way that the Trump administration did for four years. The White House defended Biden's statement. The president was reflecting the very high stakes that uh, they're in, in play right now. Former Joint Chiefs Chair Mike Mullen says Putin's nuclear threats have to be taken seriously. He's a cornered, I believe, a cornered animal, and I think he's more and more dangerous just what's happened in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, a Biden foreign policy initiative in the Middle East is putting the American economy at risk. OPEC is cutting production in part because the White House is trying to make a nuclear deal with Iran, which many Arab nations oppose. Joe Biden is continuing to tap the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to try to keep gas prices lower in the weeks leading up to Election Day. This is a failure of American policy. Joe Biden is directly responsible for the place that the world finds itself in energy. And frankly, his party, the progressive left, uh, 25 years of thinking you were going to run the world on sunshine and windmills. America's new energy crisis even has Barack Obama's Treasury Secretary blaming the White House. Look, we made a mistake by canceling the Keystone Pipeline. We made a mistake by slowing down all kinds of permitting uh, activity. We made a mistake by being hostile as a country to uh, natural gas. High gas prices are already hurting Democrats, and the last thing they need in the run-up to the midterms is another price increase. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Thank you, Dale. Well, residents in southwest Florida continue to assess the damage and pick up the pieces after Hurricane Ian. 
With whole neighborhoods washed away and more than 100 dead, we're getting a picture that the emotional toll is beginning to have. The Associated Press reports two men in their 70s took their own lives after seeing their losses. The state of Florida now setting up support centers to help victims deal with the psychological and emotional trauma. FEMA has a 24-hour hotline to provide counseling and crisis support. Meanwhile, CBN's Operation Blessing continues to help victims in the uh, hurricane's aftermath. The ministry has delivered more than 460,000 pounds of relief to churches and ministries in Fort Myers, Naples, and other hard-hit areas. In Port Charlotte, a team from the ministry Christ for All Nations volunteered with Operation Blessing to help clean up damaged homes and yards. One volunteer talked about the joy she found in helping others. It's been amazing just to come out here, be the hands and the feet of Jesus, been able to go out here to pray with other people, to pray with the organization before we go out to different people's houses and to really just uh, do the work that Jesus would do. Because I think that if Jesus was here today right now, he would be doing the same exact thing we are. That's putting the tarps on people's roofs, cleaning up their yards, doing whatever they need, just see a need, meet a need. Doing the good work, Gordon. Back to you. Well, volunteers are needed in Port Charlotte, Florida. Uh, there's some conditions. You have to be an adult. You have to be at least 18 years old. Uh, it has to be local. Daytime volunteers only. Uh, we don't have the ability to provide overnight lodging. Uh, so if you want to volunteer and help those in need, there's a special phone number here, 1-800-730-2537. Or you can visit the website, ob.org, and you can find a place where you can volunteer. Volunteers are absolutely needed. The destruction is, is horrific. Uh, in Fort Myers, uh, Port Charlotte. It's absolutely incredible what has happened there. Uh, and we need to be there for them. If you can't go, if you can't volunteer and you'd like to give, we have a special designated fund, the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. If you'd like to give to that, you can write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. You can call us and say, I want to give to the Disaster Relief Fund. Uh, it's a, our regular number, 1-800-700-7000. You can go to CBN.com. There's a place you can designate your gift, or you can text. Text to give, OBDR, text those letters, OBDR, to 71777. Either way, be a part of it. Be a part of helping people in need. Hello, this is Gordon Robertson, president of Operation Blessing. This is an urgent action alert. Right now, CBN's Operation Blessing disaster relief teams are mobilizing to provide food, clean water, and relief supplies for the millions of residents in the path of the hurricane. And we need your help today. The next several days are critical. Call now or go to operationblessing.org. Thank you and God bless. Well, according to the latest polls, the GOP holds a substantial lead among the white working class, while Democrats have a large lead among women with college degrees. A reversal of trends approaching the midterm election has both parties banking on a different type of voter to support them at the polls. Chief political analyst David Brody has more on the great realignment. In a country changed by COVID, growing inflation, and cultural wars, it should come as no surprise that a great realignment is taking place in politics, too. The Democrat Party, long considered the party of the non-college-educated working middle class in America, has seen the GOP taking its place. The real rank-and-file uh, Democrats on the ground, they're leaving their party in droves because they said, this is unrecognizable. I never signed up for this. I didn't want record high gas prices. I didn't want zero border. I wanted a country. I wanted you know, a shot at the American dream. That's what I wanted. And they see that that's not what it's been about at all. The slide has been dramatic. More than 60 years ago, JFK won white voters without a degree by a two to one margin. In 2020, Joe Biden lost those same voters by a two to one margin, a total reversal. The latest poll ahead of the midterms shows the same trend. The GOP holds an overwhelming 61 to 29 percent lead among the white working class. Even so-called middle class champions like Bernie Sanders sees the problem. And the truth is 
that the middle class of this country is falling further and further behind. Wages are not keeping up with inflation. And Democrats are also starting to lose their grip on the reliable Hispanic vote. The latest NBC News Telemundo poll shows that even though Hispanics still prefer Democrats, 54% to 33%, that 21-point lead is lower than in the past. Take a look for yourselves. In election cycles over the last 10 years, the lead has dwindled from a whopping 42% a decade ago to today's 21 points. Given the drop, analysts point to Democrats taking the Hispanic vote for granted, especially in these tough economic times, and pandering isn't helping. Jessica Anderson is with Heritage Action for America. The Biden regime is completely out of touch and pandering to Hispanic voters instead of actually getting real about the issues that just like you and I, everyone else in America that we actually care about. And so um, I think they're tired of being treated like a voting block, that it's a one size fits all rubber stamp for the Democratic Party. It is not. Cultural issues are also playing a role. Supporting abortion at any stage has turned off many pro-family Hispanic Catholic voters. You see the Democrats that are passing radical abortion laws in California and Colorado and New York that says that you can kill seven pound babies right up to the point of birth. Um, your average hardworking Hispanic uh, Catholic out there does not approve of that. Your African-American hardworking African-Americans don't approve of that. That's a radical extreme policy, and that's what the Democrat Party is pushing left and right. So while this political realignment is helping the GOP on one hand, it's also reshaping the Democrat Party to a whiter, more elite party. An NBC News poll shows Democrats with a whopping 38-point lead among women with college degrees. That's up 10 points in 2010. Polls show that these more affluent Democrat voters care more about abortion, gun control, and climate change a trend not lost on candidate Joe Biden when he chose clean energy policy over blue-collar jobs in a 2020 debate. As president, would you be willing to sacrifice some of that growth, even knowing potentially that it could displace thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of blue-collar workers in the interest of transitioning to that greener economy? The answer is yes. Democratic strategists believe pursuing the Green New Deal and more progressive priorities will help the party with college-educated voters in key suburban battlegrounds. In this election cycle, however, where the economy is the most pressing issue, this political realignment could lead to a midterm derailment. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the middle class is rising up and pushing back. I think those people have all now concluded that a little bit of noise and a little bit of tumult is probably worth it in exchange for a simpler better life, a life where you can afford the things you want to do for your family, where you don't have the progressive left attacking you at every moment. I think they can see that. So I think they're going to begin to vote for the party that's going to deliver a better life for their families. We get the realigned answers in just a few short weeks. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Well, please vote. Uh, please make sure you're registered to vote. Please participate in our wonderful democracy. Your vote really does count. Uh, I'm not about to tell you who to vote for, but I will tell you, you need to participate. You need to get informed. Uh, both parties have a, have a different vision. Uh, but my biggest concern is after elections are over, can we please come together? Can we please come together, actually govern the country? It doesn't seem like the election cycles ever stop. And in this high polarization where you're trying to demonize the other side, it's very hard then to come together in agreement and actually pass laws and actually get something done and do something about the problems we face in the world today. Our enemies are emboldened by our weakness. Uh, and whether it's China making threats against Taiwan, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the missiles coming out of North Korea, uh, the export of terrorism happening out of Iran, uh, it's all made worse because we can't come together in agreement and say, well, how can we be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all? We can't even agree on that. Uh, we've come to a point in America that we're, we're so busy 
trying to win an election, we never stop trying to win an election. And when you've won an election, you don't stop and say, well, what's the best way forward and what's the best thing to do to govern the country? In all of this, we need to seek God. And here's his advice. This is from the prophet Jeremiah. Many Christians feel like, you know, we're becoming a minority in our own country. Uh, we're, we're becoming um, um, demonized. Uh, I, I see these stories continually about uh, how bad evangelicals are. And, and in all of that, we need to pray. And, and God recognized that. So in the exiles of Israel, here's his commandment to them. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. If we come together as Christians and say, let's pray for the peace of America, let's pray for the peace of our cities, our states, even our neighborhoods, well, then we will have peace. And that will be a wonderful thing. So let's ask God for that, and let's believe, and let's pray for America. Lord, we come to you, we come to you humbly, and, and we say we need you. We can't do this on our own. We've become so polarized and so divided that we can't see our way forward. So we pray now for the peace of America. We pray for the peace of our states. We pray for the peace of our cities. We pray for the peace of our neighborhoods and our schools and our churches and our synagogues. We pray, Lord God, that you would bring peace. Without you, we can't do this, but with you, we can do all things. So Lord, once again, cause your face to shine upon us and give us your peace. We can't do it without you. We need you. So come to us now, be Emmanuel, be God with us, in us, all around us. Let your peace settle over our nation, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. If you want to join with us as we pray for our country, we're praying for 40 days. Uh, we need God. And so if you want to join with us, you can call us 1-800-700-7000. Or you can go to the PrayForAmerica.com website. Let us know you'll be praying. Uh, we've got over 19,000 people registered. If I can get a shot of the map, it'll show you all the different places where people have registered. We want to blanket the country in prayer and ask for each one of our cities, each one of our states, and for the entire nation that God would bring us peace. It would bring us together again. Now, when you call and say, I, I want to join, or where you register on the website, we'll send you a prayer flag to remind you to pray, and then a Pray for America bumper sticker so you can encourage, encourage the people around you to pray for America. So if you like those and want to call and say, yes, you can count on me, 1-800-700-7000, or go to PrayForAmerica.com. Buck Hornsby went out for his morning walk. He crawled back covered in blood. A stranger on the highway had opened fire and Buck took two shotgun blasts to his head. The driver fled while Buck was left fighting for his life. I just remember a lot of burning in my facial area, my sinuses, my neck, side of my head. The pain was excruciating. It was like falling into a black tunnel. Shh. I blacked out. Everything went. September 12th, 2017, Buck Hornsby had been enjoying a morning walk near his home in Clinton, Louisiana, fully unaware of the danger nearby. Around 60 feet from the highway, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a car suddenly pull up on the edge of the highway. And as soon as I looked that way, Two gunshots. Two shotgun blasts from an unknown attacker left his body riddled with pellets, and Buck fighting for his life. Intense pain set in as he regained consciousness. I lost sight in my right eye automatically, and then the blood started coming from everywhere. I couldn't breathe good. My heart rate was racing. I knew that 
I had major damage on this side of my body, mainly around my neck and carotid artery. Fueled by adrenaline, Buck tried to reach a nearby house, yet no one was home. Collapsing to the ground, Buck crawled nearly 600 yards to reach his uncle's home. There's a way banging on the door, and I looked up, and he was at the back door, he was just covered with blood. I opened the door and said, what happened to you? He said, somebody shot me and get me to the hospital. So we jumped in the truck and took off. If the inside looked anything worse than the outside, then he was in trouble. After reaching Baton Rouge General Hospital, Buck was taken in for x-rays to evaluate the extent of his injuries. Buck had nearly 50 pellets lodged throughout his body. The pellets landed in areas that could be life-threatening. The most potentially lethal injury is the proximity of the pellets to the carotid vessel that they overlay. Then a vascular surgeon comes in. <clears throat> he says, Mr. Hornsby, you have uh, serious damage to your carotid artery in your neck. We're going to have to do an MRI. I told him not to give me any pain medication at all because I wanted to be able to talk to my wife and my kids and tell them I love them. I didn't know if I would be there to be able to do that. When Buck's father got the news of his son's injuries, the pastor of over 40 years knew exactly what to do. We started praying right away, and uh, we already had a team in place, intercessors, that began to pray for Buck and everything that was going on in this whole area, this whole situation. There's a scripture that says there's a peace that passes all understanding. Certain times you don't understand what's going on, but there's a peace that gives you faith to believe that God is going to take care of the situation that you're involved in. 30 minutes after Buck's MRI, the surgeon came back with telling results. He said it could even be a 50-50 chance on you living if this carotid artery would have been penetrated. Had that vessel been pierced by one of the pellets that he could have bled out in a matter of just a couple minutes. It's miraculous that he survived this injury. He tells me, you were a 16th of an inch from bleeding out on your property and not being here. And he says, you are a true miracle. So I was thankful. Doctors removed what pellets they could, treated his wounds, and sent Buck home to recover the very same day. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness to us and to our family. We know that prayer can change things in your life. There was probably close to 100,000 people praying for me, and that really meant a lot to me. I believe God intervened through those prayers. Buck's attacker was later apprehended and charged with the serial murders of three other men in the area, all who were similarly targeted like Buck. A lot of anger built up in me because of the pain and suffering inflicted on these people for no reason. But I know that God had his hand on me, so there's no way I could hold any grudge or be anger, angry at him in any way. Though there's no explanation for the senseless attacks, Buck takes comfort in placing his trust in something he knows for certain, the goodness of God. The word of God is true. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. 62 feet, and the doctor tells me I'm a 16th of an inch from dying. And I know if I'd have been walking and jogging, I'd have been 20 feet from the highway, and I, I wouldn't be here. I truly believe God had his hand on me. That's why I'm talking to you today. This life is just a vapor, and if you live that way and you trust God, O oh death, where is thy sting? Life is a vapor. Life is also complicated, isn't it? I mean, in this scenario, I mean, Buck was in a situation that he, first of all, knew nothing about and didn't expect, second, didn't deserve, and then found himself in a life-threatening scenario, and God saved him. You know, some of you today have issues in your lives that you're very concerned about. It might be something medical. Uh, it could be something that 
that involves drugs or alcohol or finances, whatever it might be. God is big. He's very big. And he does order the steps of righteous men and women. We want to take some time today to pray for you, to build up your faith, to know that God sees you right where you are. He understands the dilemma that you're in. He wants to enter into that scenario with you. So we want to take some time to pray for you today, to ask the God who created the universe, who birthed you, who breathed life into you, to step right into the middle of whatever your need is and do something miraculous for you. Here are some other stories of God doing just that for other people. After losing lots of weight and feeling very sick, 62-year-old Mary of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, went to see her doctor. A CT scan revealed she had a tumor in her lung. The doctor said it was cancer and that she would have to have surgery or chemotherapy. Mary immediately called the 700 Club prayer line. We prayed with her. When Mary went back to the doctor, he did another CT scan and the tumor was gone. Her three doctors are very confused, but Mary knows that the Lord took away her tumor and healed her. Thank you, God. Praise God. Here's 40... Four-year-old Jason of Brookwood, Alabama, he had a torn rotator cu cuff, made ordinary t tasks extremely painful. He called the 700 Club prayer line. We agreed in prayer with, the, with him for a total healing. He called back to report his next MRI, revealed that the tear was gone. Wow. He gives all glory to God. Let's give glory to God in advance. Jesus said things happen so the glory of the Lord would be revealed. You find that in John chapter 9. These things happen so God's glory could be revealed. He could come and, and be your all in all. Let's give him thanks for that. Let's give him thanks for the so solution. Don't praise him for the problem. Praise him for the solution and realize the solution has already been provided. When you do that, you walk into the great miracles that Jesus talked about. Believe in your heart that you have already received and you will have it. So let's believe right now. Let's confess our belief. In an act of faith, lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing. Terry and I will agree with you. There's a wonderful verse when two or more agree, that's key, agree, touching anything, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. You touch will be your agree, and God will do the rest. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you, we come to you believing, we come to you confessing that you forgive all our iniquities and you heal all our diseases. So we come into agreement for everyone laying a hand on that area of the body that needs healing. We agree with them right now, touching it. And we say out loud, be healed and be made whole. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. I receive every blessing that God has for me. I receive that the glory of the Lord will be revealed in my body now. I receive everything he has for me. In Jesus' name, amen. There's someone you've got a problem with your right shoulder, and you heard the story about the rotator cuff, and you're saying, please say that. Please say rotator cuff. Please say it so that my, uh, I'm sorry, your left shoulder. May, may be healed. In Jesus' name, that shoulder is being released. What you couldn't do before, go ahead and raise that left arm all the way up. God has healed that rotator. You are healed now in Jesus' name. Terry? Yeah, there are many, many of you who, for different reasons, all suffer from chronic pain. I mean, life-interrupting chronic pain. Just put your hand on that part of the body that hurts like that and feel the warmth as Jesus pours out his powerful healing upon you today, setting you free. Some of you, uh, inflammation in different parts of your body, knees that are swollen and, swollen and achy, just lay your hands there and feel that warmth as God infuses you with more of his power in Jesus' name. So a woman named Mary, you're laying your left hand on the back of your left side of your neck. 
Uh, there's just extraordinary pain. And in Jesus' name, be healed. All the muscles relax. Everything come into proper alignment in your spine. You are healed now in Jesus' name. Just receive it. God's calling you by name, Mary. He knows you. He loves you tenderly. He is healing every bit of that in Jesus' name. Receive it. Yes, another, another person, maybe it's persons, you have chronic headaches. I mean, it's just almost a daily affair with you, taking more pain medicine than you're comfortable with. No relief. Today is your day. Be set free in Jesus' name as that clamp around your head comes off and you feel it. You feel it. Just begin to praise God. Uh, there's someone you've been, you were involved in a bicycle accident, and, and since that, your spine has just not been right. You are being healed from the top of your head all the way down that back. In Jesus' name, be healed. Everything be in alignment. The trauma of the injury be broken off of you. Everything be whole in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that your glory is revealed. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for healing. We thank you for forgiveness. Be with us now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've been healed, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. You heard two stories just now of people being healed by calling a prayer line. We're here for you. We're here for you 24 hours a day. If you want prayer, all you have to do is pick up the phone and call us, 1-800-700-7000. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Human rights groups from Russia and Ukraine are the winners of this year's Nobel Peace Prize. The honor going to human rights advocate Alice Bialyatsky from Belarus and two human rights organizations, one to a Russian group called Memorial, the other to Ukraine's Center for Civil Liberties. They were honored for their work documenting war crimes, human rights abuses, and the abuse of power in their countries. Previous winners of the prestigious award include Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., and the International Committee of the Red Cross. CBN India's flagship ministry program, Agnai Zindagi, completed its 17th year broadcasting in September. To celebrate, the team put on a special live YouTube episode of the program. It featured well-known pastor and gospel singer Persis John, who prayed and sang on the show. Now, Indian Christian music has been popular on YouTube, allowing the show to reach a younger audience. Since its broadcast, the special YouTube episode has received thousands of views. Congratulations to them. Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com slash international. Prince Sika is a little girl living in India. Today, she loves to laugh, run, play with her friends. But not long ago, she was severely burned. She was in so much pain, she refused to eat. Her parents worried that she would die. I was playing with my sister and she pushed me. I fell on the cooking fire and got burned really bad. It hurt a lot and made me cry. Prince Sika severely burned her chest and back. My husband and I searched for a hospital that would give her proper treatment. But we found none we could afford. Prinsika cried all the time from the pain. It was unbearable. Her whole stomach was scalded. Her hand was burned. And it all hurt her so badly. We worried she would die soon. Thick, painful scars began to form on the open wounds, making it hard for Prinsika to sleep or even eat normally. She became badly malnourished. I tried to feed her, but Prinsika refused to eat because she was in so much pain. When we tried to clean her wounds, she barely allowed us to touch her. Prinsika's parents had no money for the surgery she so desperately needed. Her mother made some home remedies, but gave up all hope for her recovery. All day I stayed with her and put on my ointments, but they didn't do much. We felt helpless. Then the family came to a hospital that partners with Operation Blessing. First, we put Prinsika on a good diet to fight the malnourishment. 
Then we paid for the multiple surgeries she needed. Now she's perfectly fine. She has no more pain. Her skin has even turned back to its natural color. Her father and I are so relieved to see her happy again. She plays with her friends and she's filled with joy and laughter. I come out here to play in the field. It makes me happy. Thank you so much everyone who contributed for Prinsika's surgery. You gave her a new life and a better future. Well, you certainly changed her life. You changed the life of her parents. You changed the life of people all around who saw what it was you did in the name of the Lord. We say thank you, 700 Club members. This little girl's life will never be the same because of your kindness and your generosity. That's what happens, folks, with the 700 Club members every day. If you're not a 700 Club member, you are missing out on the opportunity of a lifetime to touch people's lives and change them forever. For $20 a month, that's 65 cents a day, you can become a 700 Club member. Would you consider joining if you haven't? If you're already a 700 Club member, can I ask you to think about increasing your giving? Let me show you the options that you have because there, there are many. That top line is a general membership, $20 a month, but you could go up to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month or increase to the 1,000 Club at $80 a month. Our 2,500 Club members join us at $209 a month. That's $2,500 a year or become a founder. That's $417 or more a month and you join, that's $5,000 a year. Ask God what he'd have you to do. And then would you call because there are many, many people in need, not just around the world, but right here at home as well. And all of your giving makes a difference in their lives. We want to say thank you to you for caring about other people by sending you Gordon's latest teaching on the Lord is my shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. It's the favorite Psalm of so many of us. And this really breaks it down and even makes it more personal as you hear what he has to say about the origin of the Lord is my shepherd. We want you to have this and we'll get it out to you right away when you call. There's our toll free number 1-800-700-7000. Just call now and say, I want to join the 700 Club. To the wisdom as I ask these. Uh -huh. <laughs> this first one comes from Harriet, who says, do you prayerfully approach the news you broadcast? Yes, Harriet, we, we pray over everything around here. I pray yeah. over the news department. Do I, do I review every single assignment? No, I don't. Uh, I, I want the news team to be free to go out and gather news. I do pray for the team. Uh, certainly pray over what I say and, and pray uh, in advance of the broadcast. Every, every broadcast is prayed over uh, that God would uh, give us the wisdom that we need for the times that we live in and that 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 would would flow through us so uh the short answer is yes this is birdie who says what are the consequences of not accepting the call to preach the gospel or doing any type of ministry of the lord uh there, i can i can get judgmental with this one and i'm I don't know why I'm, I'm avoiding that. There, there is a passage that the Apostle Paul talks about. He says, their blood will be on your hands. And he's quoting from the Old Testament that if you fail to warn, if the, if the watchman fails to warn uh, the city of incoming, uh, of the danger that they face, uh, that their blood will be on their hands. And the Apostle Paul said, I can confidently say their blood is not on my hands because I announce the good news to them. There's another way to look at it, and I prefer this other way of looking at it. How can you say you love your neighbor and then withhold the gospel from them? Um, let that guide you. It's, it's the love of Christ that compels you to share. And anytime you share out of a position of love, faith always works through love. Uh, I've never argued anyone into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you love people. It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Um, now, if you feel a call, and, and I've met lots of people that had a call to missions or a call to ministry, and for whatever reason, you stuff that down and you say, well, you know, I can't possibly be, be God. I've got some great news for you. You can accept the call anytime you want to. Isn't that wonderful? God gives you the free will. And the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. So if you feel called and you have regret that you didn't respond to it, 
just have a very simple prayer. God, how about now? Could you use me now? And when you pray that with all of your heart, he will answer it and he will give you some really good things to do. This is Rochelle who says, why do we pray for people and loved ones that are lost if they have their own will and God doesn't make them do anything? There's a lot to learn from the prophet Samuel. And one of the things to learn is his sort of parting prayer and, and sermon, if you will, to the nation of Israel. And he says, and it's a real pointed saying, I did not, I, I, I always prayed for you. I would not sin by neglecting you in prayer. When you pray for people, you're praying that God would send messengers after his own heart to them. You find that in Jeremiah chapter 3. Let, let God send missioner, missionaries, messengers after his own heart. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Pray that you would be one of those laborers. Pray that these things would happen. You need to have messengers because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Who will we send is a constant call from heaven. So what you're praying for is not for their will to be overwritten. What you're praying for is that people will come alongside them and announce the good news. We leave you today with these words from Isaiah chapter 26. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. May you be fixed on God today. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.